Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel XGene and ProteinX. In this tutorial video, I'm going to talk about dot blot technique and general protocol and also some other information about dot blot technique. So let's begin. So the dot blot technique is it for detecting, analyzing and identifying proteins similar to the western blot technique. But the main difference is that in the western blot, we use normally electrophoresis, the gel formation. But here in the dot blot, there is no required the electrophoresis or there is no required for the gel. So the, the directly you can add the, your sample onto the membrane. And also the main difference in between western and dot blot is that in the dot blot, if you have multiple samples and the sample size is, if it is a uh, little less, then you should use the dot blot. This is very much convenient in this case. So you have to have this kind of devices, uh, this kind of cassettes and this circle, it's representing these are the hole and uh, these are actually transparent. And also you have to have this kind of long and um, this kind of nodules yeah, that uh, pipette tips and this pipette tips is very much convenient to put your sample onto the membrane. So next is the before start dot plot you have to have uh, nitrocellulose and or PVDF membrane and then onto your membrane you have to put your this device that I showed in previous slide. So here and next is that you have to mark it one by one in each well. So after that we can remove this device. So here you see that your membrane is marked by the pencil. So this marked point you have to add sample one by one. So general protocol is now your membrane is ready to start the dot blot. So now you can add one by one your sample and that sample it's not more than 3 microliter. Otherwise it can spread and uh, it fuses together with the nearby sample. And next is uh, leave the membrane at room temperature to dry up. It takes around 45 to 60 minutes. And next is the uh, blocking steps is all are the same. After that, uh, with the, similar with the W and Western blots techniques. So here you can use 5% BSA or milk in TNT and for one hour blocking. And after that, you need to dry off the membrane so next is the incubation stage so here you can add primary antibody incubation two hour or overnight at four degrees centigrade so normally the if the if this primary antibody it is purified they normally use one is two thousand and for hybridoma supernatant it is normally use one is two hundred and next process is the washing. So washing thrice with TBS to TNT. And next is the incubation with the secondary antibody. So in case, in case of the secondary antibody incubation, and here is no required uh, like adding. Uh, this is common actually. This is all are the similar with the Western blot techniques. And next is the washing steps. And then scan the membrane. So this membrane is ready to scan after that. So next I wanna say that's I discussed that is the general protocol for the dot blot. But also there are different kind of situation that you cannot use this general protocol. Like if the sample is very less concentrated, normally it is less concentrated, right? And or the desired antigen antibody present very minute quantity in the sample, then that I mentioned that 2 microliter or 3 microliter need to add onto the membrane and this 2 microliter or 3 microliter sample is not enough to identify antigen or antibody because this is less concentrated right so in this case you cannot use the same technique so this is how you're gonna discuss the if you want to uh, do it by yourself practically then this part the latter part it will be very much useful so what you have to do, 
like you have to have your membrane and then if you if you add more than three microliter that i mentioned that it gonna spread everywhere and then it can fuse together with another sample so if you add more than three microliter so you cannot get your right result so what you have to do like case one so first case like if you have your antibody in the supernatant like if you have different clones and you want to check that which clones secreting higher concentrated antibody so that clones you need to select right or or in case of the hybridoma is a similar kind of things so in that case what you have to do so you have to detect the antigen right so here you have some specific antigen against that antibody right so you have to select that antigen and you have to load that antigen as your sample so here you have to add antigen first and that antigen one by one each well you have to add and the concentration should be 200 to 500 nanogram per well all right then it will be very convenient and it will be easier to identify the detection and next is the same process dry up the membrane after adding the antigen dry up the membrane and then blocking and after blocking also you need to dry up that membrane and next is the that device that i showed you in the previous slide that first slide that is the this kind of device you have to what to what you have to do just you have to put that device onto your membrane so right now your you already marked right so you can easily put that device onto your membrane and then you can you can fix it by the cliff right so you can see here that you can see your marked samples so why do you mark you can see easily right so now what you have to do you have to add in this step your sample that your supernatant if you have so you can add your supernatant so in this case you can add around 100 microliter per oil but you have to have very tightly fixed with this device with this kind of binder clip then you can able to add 100 microliter of your sample per well so instead of 2 to 3 microliter sample you can add right now 100 microliter so it's higher chance to get detected that antigen so this is a case one and case two so next process this is common it's like washing and the incubation of the secondary antibody and then washing again and then just scan the membrane and case two instead of antibody if you have antigen in the supernatant then what you have to do you have you have to select some specific antibody against that antigen and then you have to load that antibody onto the wells so each well you can add around 200 to 500 nanogram per oil that antibody and the rest of the process are all same and then dry up the membrane blocking and then dry up again and then again you have to put that device onto your membrane and then you can hold it you can fix it by binder clip and then you can add your sample around 100 microliter each oil right then this antigen and this antibody can it can uh, interact and then it can see the band by incubation with the secondary antibody so here you have to add around 100 microliter per oil and this is this period two hours incubation at room temperature also previous one is the same two hour incubation at the room temperature that's enough and then um, the washing and incubation with secondary antibody this rest of the past part are all are the same so here is one of the sample that i would like to show you that is the the 5c 6c 7c and 8c these are the uh, different um, uh, anti different dot blot result so here as you see in this there are different clones so actually this is the antibody uh, antibody sample and i would like to uh, see the expression of the clone 
So here as you see in this picture that 6C and 8C these clones are higher expressing antibody. So after that I need to select these two clones compared to the others. So these are the these two clones are higher secreting antibody. So this is why uh, this is how you can you can use um, uh, dot blot and you can follow this all of the steps. So I think it will be useful. So that's it. So I hope this video will be helpful. If you like this video, kindly hit the like button, share it, and if you have any queries, kindly write in the comment section. And if you really think that this video is helpful, please and please subscribe my channel. Thanks.